Crossing the River stands as a historical novel crafted by British author Carol Phillips, initially published in 1993. This profound work delves into the experiences of three black individuals across different historical epochs, all grappling with the profound disconnection from their native Africa. The central characters include Nash, an educated and devout slave who embarks on a journey to Africa to serve as a Christian missionary, Martha, an elderly slave who escapes the shackles of bondage, yearning to reach California where she can finally savor the taste of freedom, and Travis, a U.S. soldier who finds himself in England during the tumultuous period of the Second World War. The title Crossing the River serves as a potent metaphor, encapsulating the dual notions of death and deliverance. The river, in this context, symbolizes the multifaceted struggles that African people and their descendants endure throughout their lifetimes. Moreover, it evokes the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean, over which countless slaves were forcibly transported from Africa to the Americas. The novel deftly explores themes encompassing the diaspora experience, the complex interplay of Christianity, moral dilemmas, and the varied responses of individuals when confronted with temptation. Crossing the River earned resounding acclaim, securing the prestigious 1993 James Tate Black Memorial Prize for Fiction and the Lannan Literary Award, while also earning a coveted spot on the Booker Prize shortlist. Its compelling narrative was subsequently adapted into a BBC radio drama. The story unfolds through the narration of a character known only as the Ancestor, who presents himself as an elderly man compelled by famine to sell his own children into slavery. The book ultimately reveals that this character is not an individual, but rather embodies the spirit of Africa itself. Structured into three distinct sections, the novel chronicles the lives of its main characters in a chronological sequence. First and foremost is Nash, and his story is interwoven with that of Edward Williams, his religious white slave owner. Edward, in a paradoxical act, grants Nash's freedom, enabling him to journey to Africa as part of the American Colonization Society's mission to educate and convert the indigenous Africans to Christianity. Following the unfortunate loss of contact with Nash, Edward receives a distressing letter informing him of Nash's disappearance from the village where he had been stationed. Overwhelmed by concern, Edward embarks on a voyage to Africa. After traversing various villages, he finally encounters someone who can provide information about Nash's fate. Tragically, he learns that Nash succumbed to fever. The news devastates Edward, as he had held genuine affection for Nash. His grief deepens upon discovering that Nash had strayed from the path of a devout Christian life. Instead, Nash had accumulated a multitude of native wives and indulged in a range of vices. This section of the narrative concludes with Edward standing amidst the humble dwelling where Nash had resided, while the curious natives observe his bewildered reaction, wondering about the peculiar behavior of this unfamiliar white man. The subsequent segment of the story shifts focus to Martha Randolph, an elderly woman who has endured the heart-wrenching loss of her husband and daughter at a slave auction. Resolute in her determination not to die in the bonds of slavery in Kansas, Martha makes the courageous decision to escape from her oppressors and seek freedom in the liberated state of California. The arduous journey takes its toll, and Martha frequently slows down her fellow travelers due to her advanced age. In Colorado, the group reluctantly leaves her behind, concerned that her presence might impede their progress. Trapped in the unforgiving cold of Colorado, Martha succumbs to the harsh elements, dying of exposure. A benevolent white woman offers Martha shelter for the night, but the frigid temperatures have already exacted their toll, and Martha passes away peacefully in her sleep. The well-intentioned host desires to provide Martha with a Christian burial, yet she faces the dilemma of not knowing the name by which Martha was known. She ultimately decides to choose a name for her, a final indignity following a lifetime of such injustices. Martha had received a new name with each change of ownership and she had always harbored a deep aversion to this practice. Furthermore, her own beliefs regarding God had never been honored during her lifetime or in her passing. The concluding section of the narrative unfolds from the perspective of Joyce, a white Englishwoman who crosses paths with Travis, a World War II soldier. While Travis is introduced as a supposed sibling of Nash and Martha, his narrative unfolds a century later, shedding light on the true nature of the narrator. Joyce's path crosses with Travis in her husband's store, a man who routinely subjects her to physical abuse. 
However, her husband's misdeeds catch up with him as he is arrested for engaging in illicit black market activities during the wartime. In the wake of her husband's incarceration, Joyce and Travis find an immediate and undeniable attraction between them, leading to an affair that ignites a passionate connection. Soon, Joyce discovers that she is pregnant with Travis's child, but their happiness is short-lived as Travis is called back to the front and tragically loses his life in combat. Joyce faces a heart-wrenching decision as she is compelled to give up their child after giving birth, as it would be deemed socially unacceptable for her to raise a black baby. Their son, Greer, is raised in an orphanage, and the chapter concludes with a poignant moment when he visits his mother two decades after their painful separation. The novel draws to a close with the ancestor reflecting that, although all his children have passed away, they ultimately reached the metaphorical bank of the river, having experienced love. Carol Phillips, a renowned Ketitian British novelist, playwright, and essayist, stands as one of the most celebrated voices in the realm of Black Atlantic literature. With a literary portfolio comprising ten novels and four plays, he has garnered recognition as a Fellow of the Royal Society of Arts, a Guggenheim Fellow, and a two-time recipient of the Commonwealth Writers' Prize. Currently holding the position of Professor of English at Yale University, his contributions to literature continue to resonate profoundly. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.